Today we're taking you to a massive cruise center and the only place to dock when visiting Grand Turk by cruise ship. We are going to the Grand Turk Cruise Center, which is a $50 million cruise port, which Carnival Cruise Line opened in 2006. What do you need to bring? What's there to do? We're going to tell you everything you need to know to prepare for your day at Grand Turk. All that and more coming right up. To make sure you get all the information you need, we're going to go over arrivals and departure, port atmosphere, what to do at Grand Turk Cruise Center, dining, what's near the port, and what to bring with you. So let's get started with arrivals and departures to the Grand Turk Cruise Port. There's a massive two-berth cruise ship here, so you don't need to tender, which means you get to the fun and relaxing faster. It can take a couple massive ships. We were there on the Carnival Mardi Gras, and the Carnival Freedom was there as well. It's not a long walk from the end of the pier. As a side note, when we were there, we did notice that there weren't any shuttles or anything. So keep that in mind if you have any accessibility needs. Once you get to the end of the pier though, you're right in the duty free, which takes you right into the port atmosphere. This is a manufactured port that Carnival Cruise Line built in 2006 and has many activities. So you don't need to leave the Grand Turk Cruise Center and still have a great time. A lot of what is at the port is free and we will go over all of that. It is a beautiful port to walk around with palm trees, brightly colored buildings and beachfront. Not many cruise ports have beachfront and that's a big feature that sets Grand Turk apart from other manufactured cruise ports like Costa Maya. If you want to know more, we got a couple of videos about that. The weather in Grand Turk is great. In the winter months, the average is 80 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the summer months, it can reach the mid 90s. We were there in the summer and it was hot. My sister and I had been walking around, taking video and exploring. I was just going to get a little bit extra video of the beach. And the next thing I know, she's found some shade under the fin of the whale. It was hilarious. So you definitely want to bring your water and all the sun protection. You could break up the port into four main areas, the shopping area, the pool, North Beach and South Beach. So let's take a look at each of these areas and what you can do at the port. The first area when you come to when you get off the ship is the shopping and market area. You walk through the duty free and there's a variety of shops. Some you have at all the ports like the duty free, FE Jewelers, Diamonds International, Del Sol, other jewelry and clothing shops. My favorite area here though was the local craft market. Lots of local vendors have different jewelry, souvenirs and other crafts that they're selling. In this shopping market area, there's also a Starbucks which has free Wi-Fi. It's nice to take the opportunity to connect with your friends and family back home. We do recommend you may want to bring a battery pack as you can go through your power pretty quick. We do have a wireless one that we really like and I'll add the link to the description below to our website so you can check it out. The next main area is the pool area which has a large pool with loungers that anyone can use. There are private air conditioned pool cabanas for rent and you can book those through your cruise line. This is where you can also find the flow rider which you can book through your cruise line or there's a booth you can visit to see if there's times available that you can book. It is a lot of fun watching people trying and learning how to surf. I tried a flow rider on Royal Caribbean and absolutely loved it. In this area is also Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, which is the largest one in the Caribbean and there's a swim up bar. There's a lot of outdoor seating with views of the pool area or the beach. This is definitely the most popular dining location at the cruise port. During the day, there's also a DJ playing music and doing pool games. It's a fun area to hang out and if you're not a fan of swimming in the ocean, cooling off in the pool is a nice option. On the other side of the pool area is North Beach. This is the most popular beach at the Grand Turk Cruise Center with beach chairs and there are not as many rocks as on South Beach. The water is beautiful and so inviting. In the summer when it's super hot, cooling off in the ocean is the best. If you want to get loungers by the pool or on North Beach, you will want to get off the ship relatively early as those are the two busiest areas. On that note, there's no charge to use the pool, the beach or the loungers at the cruise port. If you want snorkeling equipment, water floaties or a clamshell shade, then you can rent those at the beach rental hut. There's also a nice little snack bar on North Beach where you can purchase some food and drink as well. 
So let's head back towards the other side of the cruise port where we will go to our fourth area and this is where you'll find South Beach and the NASA exhibit. It is definitely worth stopping by the free NASA exhibit. It's all outdoors and commemorates the 1962 splashdown of the Friendship 7 capsule. There are some fun life-size replicas. South Beach is a lot quieter and you will for sure be able to find a lounger there. We found that there's not as much shade and it's a lot rockier, so we would recommend having some water shoes. My sister who was with me is not very comfortable swimming in the ocean and she was worried about the wildlife. It took her about 30 minutes to build up the courage to get in. After we were in the water, only a few minutes later, somebody was snorkeling and started screaming for their friends to come over and check something out. Well, that's all it took for my sister to get out the water and that was the end of her swimming adventure as it turns out it was a lobster and they were all screaming lobster and yeah, that was it. However, I thought it was really nice to relax and be floating in the water. If you're looking for some food and drink while on South Beach, you can stop at the Beached Whale Bar and Grill. I like the look of the Beached Whale and it fits perfectly with the vibe of South Beach. This is also the beach with the massive whale, which is where my sister found shade under. So those are the four main sections of the Grand Turk Cruise Center and what's included or cost extra. This video is mainly about what's at the Grand Turk Cruise Port. And even though there's so much to do at the port, we know lots of you like to go exploring elsewhere. So we'll go over a few of the other things near the port if you're looking to adventure off. Cockburn Town is approximately three miles away and has a bunch of historical buildings. You can walk there, but just know there aren't any sidewalks and it can be hot. Another popular tourist attraction is the Grand Turk Lighthouse. There are also a lot of excursions and tons of water-based ones like snorkeling, diving, fishing, and so on. If you're interested in more land-based activities, there's horseback riding, bicycling, and 4x4 adventures. On the Grand Turk Cruise Center website, you can see a list of all the excursions. These are sold through the cruise line, so the prices may vary depending on who you're sailing with. Lots of people prefer renting vehicles and exploring on their own. There is a car rental center right at the cruise port. You do need a valid driver's license from home and be warned, they drive on the left-hand side. Grand Turk Cruise Center has lots of taxis. The car rental, as I said, as a taxi tip, they do not have meters, so it is charged by zone and per person. So before you get in the taxi and start driving away, just confirm how much it's gonna cost. If you're off exploring on your own, the beaches are beautiful with turquoise water and they're all open to the public and free of charge. If you've ever gone off exploring, what's your favorite place? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear for our next trip there. We also often get asked what people should bring with them to the cruise port. At Grand Turk, there's so much to do right at the cruise port. You just need to bring your stuff to enjoy at the day at the port. It's good to have a little cash on your credit card. US dollars is the official currency and the stores at the port do accept credit cards. So if you wanna do some shopping, make sure you bring some. If you plan on spending a lot of time in the pool and water, you do need to bring your own towels from the ship. Just remember to take them back with you. We also recommend a rash guard and water shoes. It's good to bring all that sun protection like hats, sunscreen, and sunglasses as we said. We also like to bring water with us because no one wants to get heat stroke while on vacation. <clears throat> Aaron. In our backpack, we also have a power pack, as I mentioned earlier, and I also like to bring a few Ziploc bags to keep our phones and money dry. If you're heading off for an excursion, some have requirements or recommendations like long pants, so be sure to check. When we did horseback riding in Amber Cove, they did recommend for us to have long pants. My sister and I did. We did meet a couple people who forgot and they definitely felt it. So if your excursion has recommendations, we suggest following them. It's also nice to be able to tip the people who take you on the excursions, so bringing a little money to show your appreciation is also recommended. Overall, we were really impressed with all the activities and the beaches at Grand Turk. Only Carnival Corp and affiliate cruise lines visit Grand Turk Cruise Port. This is definitely a port I'd recommend getting off, exploring, bringing your water stuff, just in case you get inspired to swim. I love relaxing on the beach and hearing the sound of the waves. If you want to go on an adventure like snorkeling or learn how to surf on the flow rider, they have that as well. This isn't a port though that you need to book an excursion as there's a lot to enjoy right there. We have tons of other Caribbean cruise port tours, so if you want to know more about the other stops on your cruise, feel free to check out our videos. We hope that you found this video about the Grand Turk Cruise Center helpful. Have you ever visited before? What's your favorite thing to do when at Grand Turk? 
Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing from you all. If you want some more of our content, we have another channel, Flamingos in Wonderland, where we talk about all things Disney and theme parks. Remember, memories are forever, so make them fabulous. Thanks again for watching and happy travels. It is a massive pool with the loungers. I've said massive like 10 times. I'm going to switch that up. <clears throat>